Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolum video and another plug side chat. So, you know, I posted just recently my first impressions of the Kona EV and unsurprisingly I've gotten a lot of feedback because about the time that I was posting that uh, Bjorn Nyland also did a little bit more uh, efficiency runs in terms of testing out the actual uh, efficiency and economy of the different vehicles. And he also tested out the Ampera E. Now, this brings up an interesting question because I trust Bjorn as a source, right? And I trust his data points. But at the same time, I also recognize that his data does not match my own. There are discrepancies that you expect anytime you're gathering data, anytime you're recording things, especially when it comes to something like fuel economy of a vehicle, right? Because so many different conditions, so many different factors can impact it. And the best we can do is to try and mitigate those uh, and account for them, right? And I know just from personal experience that what I've seen with my Bolt EV in terms of efficiency tends to be higher than what other Bolt EV owners see. And more than likely that's due to changing out the rims for the cruise eco rims, but other factors could be tire pressure, uh, climate control usage and things of that nature. And I actually do believe there's some somewhat of a difference between the Bolt EV LT, which I have, and the Bolt EV Premier. The Premier, I believe, is a little bit heavier. Uh, it has like the subwoofer in the rear. Its power draw is probably higher overall. And that's the reason why when some of you have told me, well, when I'm doing 70 miles an hour or I'm doing 75 miles an hour, this is my efficiency, which is lower than what I'm seeing driving at those speeds. And I accept that. I, I think that those data points are still valid, but they're within reason, right? So when I'm seeing a discrepancy at 70 miles an hour, I'm typically seeing 3.6 to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, other people at 70 miles an hour are seeing 3.5 miles per kilowatt hours. So those are very, very similar numbers. You were talking about maybe a 5% discrepancy uh, between efficiencies that we're seeing. But the numbers that I was seeing from Bjorn's video are significantly lower, right? We're talking about 20% uh, plus or minus five, right? So somewhere between 15 and 25% lower efficiency numbers that Bjorn has seen driving Powell's uh, Ampera E under very similar conditions to what I would be driving my Bolt EV. So a perfect example of that is, you know, he was seeing essentially close to three miles per kilowatt hour uh, energy usage doing 75 miles an hour. Whereas I just recently, and the reason I know this is because I started my 500 mile trip at a different location because of a evacuation mandatory evacuation due to a wildfire, I got right on the freeway essentially from my starting point from resetting my efficiency calculator, got right on the freeway and was doing 75 miles an hour without any elevation changes, not significant changes in direction or anything else with climate control running, you know, cooling about 20 degrees below outside ambient temperature and I was still seeing 3.3 .3 to 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. That's a significant increase over what Bjorn's seen going to sustained 75 miles an hour. Uh, and again, and that's with climate control usage that ended up taking between five and 10% of the energy usage. So my actual efficiency numbers only for driving were even higher than that. The reason I bring this up is I don't think he's a less valid source for data than I am, but there are discrepancies and it 
it's worth investigating why. Based on my experiences with the Bolt EV, based on what I saw his testing with the Ampera E, uh, the two don't match up. Now, does that mean that if I got into a Kona EV, I would see 20% better efficiency than what he saw driving at 70 miles an hour? Maybe, but I kind of doubt it. And this is why it's important to draw from multiple data sources uh, to weigh different pieces of evidence. Uh, it's all just part of basic critical thinking that we should all be doing, checking data against other data what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, why is it val uh, valid, why is it invalid, uh, what biases might the person have, what factors are they con you know, considering and what factors are they not considering. It's always good, if you can, to bring in controls or other third-party data. And this is one of the reasons, too, why I've been so surprised with the numbers that Bjorn has been posting between the Ampera E and the Kona EV is if you also bring in outside testing agencies, the numbers match closer to my experiences than they do to Bjorn's, except for maybe the WLTP cycle. For example, if you look at the EPA testing, the Kona EV 64 kilowatt hour has a range of 250 miles. The Bolt EV has a range of 238 miles with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. So according to EPA, the Bolt EV is actually more efficient than the Kona EV. If you go by the MPGE standard, the Bolt EV's combined MPGE is 119, where the Kona's is only 117. So it's close, but the advantage still goes to the Bolt EV which is why it's surprising when you see the WLTP standard where the Bolt EV actually gets a lower range of 236 miles, yet the Kona EV's range skyrockets up to 292. And the reason I find that so ridiculous is if you had 64 kilowatt hours of available energy and you're going 292 miles, that's 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That's putting the Kona EV's efficiency at higher than what you're going to see in the Ionic electric in real world driving. That doesn't seem accurate to me. Again, it's bringing in objective third party data. And so now essentially what you have is four different data sets. And this gives me more motivation to do actual efficiency testing. Right now, I've just been doing data from real world perspectives, but maybe I do need to do some more controlled testing so that I don't want to say that the data is irrefutable because again, conditions can change. There are all sorts of other circumstances, but uh, it, it may be more valid, but more specific data set in regards to the various efficiencies. So, all, all this is, is I'm just really basically saying, weigh the data, weigh the sources, don't attack the sources though, uh, unless they're, you know, obviously or clearly trying to manipulate the data or misrepresent things, which again, I consider Bjorn a, a trusted source. I don't consider him biased in any way. I think it was very good that he dropped the Tesla Bjorn moniker because, you know, that sort of implies an inborn bias when he's always been one of the less biased sources. But I'd also say too, something seems off with Powell's Ampera E, and I don't know what it is. Um, I do know that it barely has like 3,500 kilometers, which I might have had that in the first month of ownership. So I, I'm not sure if Maybe it's just not broken in, the tires, something. I'm not sure. But I will say this, the numbers are not, uh, the numbers don't reflect my experiences. And I'll stand by that until my own data comes up with different results. I want to test the Kona Electric. I just don't know when it will be available. I've been trying to test the Hyundai Ionic Electric, but I don't know when it will be available. 
there's one that I can test possibly for a short drive, but just about everybody's driven it for a short drive. I, I want to be able to do a real world testing the way I would normally drive, which is also why I'm not really interested in testing the current version of the Nissan Leaf. It's just really not designed or equipped for the type of driving that I would do with it. The Kona EV, on the other hand, is the Nero EV upcoming is. So those are all vehicles I'll go out of my way to try and test, but they have to be available. And right now they're not. But anyway, you know, like I said, maybe I went a little bit too long on this, but I, I think it's important that we as a community value our different data sources and try to understand why there are disagreements with data and and use it to sort of get a better gauge of the options that are available, what actually works, what doesn't work, and how it plays out in the real world. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, if you think I'm off base, if you think my data shouldn't be trusted, whatever it is, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It does really help the channel and thank you for watching.